Let someone shout hallelujah. Let us pray. Alpha Omega Alpha Omega You are worthy of our praises today You are worthy of our praises today Hallelujah beginning and the ending, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the Almighty. We bless your holy name because you are, you are so good as to have brought us to a new beginning of the year of the redeemed Christian Church of God. Thank you for what you did in the past. Thank you for what you are doing now. Thank you for what you will do in the future. Thank you for a new wave of glory. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. As we gather together again to dine with you tonight, we pray that you will do something new again in our lives. In everything we need, Lord God Almighty, to be fruitful, please release to us tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And let someone shout hallelujah. Well, wave at one or two people and say good evening. God bless you. And we'll go straight to Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. We'll just read from verse 7 to 14. Where the, the whole story is from verse 1, but we'll read it from verse 7 to 14. I'm, I'm sure you will understand. And Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah had it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And he ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am wax old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? 
At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Our theme for this month, as you know, is God bless you, part eight. And a theme is you shall be fruitful. Here we read about a meal that changed the destiny of a woman and her husband. A meal that opened the womb that was hopelessly shut. A meal that brought back to life the womb that was already dead. A meal that led to tremendous fruitfulness. So the only communion of tonight is not just an ordinary one, not just a regular one. It's a holy communion that is going to lead to the opening of wombs. If you read Genesis chapter 27, from verse 1 to 33, Genesis 27 from verse 1 to 23, Isaac said to Esau, prepare me the kind of meal that I like. Make me pleased with this very special meal that I may pour my blessing upon you. You know the rest of the story? Somehow, the mother of Esau informed Jacob of what the father was planning to do. Jacob prepared the meal, very nice meal, while Esau was away brought to the father who didn't fully recognize him the father ate he was happy he was pleased and he poured tremendous blessings upon Jacob after he finished and Jacob had just gone out of the door the brother came back from the farm and the father said what are you talking about who is it that brought me food i've eaten i've enjoyed the meal i've already blessed him and if you look at verse 33 there and he said and he shall be blessed when isaac enjoyed the meal he pronounced a blessing that cannot be reversed. In the text that I read to you tonight, Abraham and Sarah prepared a meal for God. God enjoyed the meal and said, whether you believe it or not, whether you laugh in mockery, whether you want to say, eh, we've had you be say before, uh, in Genesis chapter 12, you said that I will, uh, through my seed, the nation of the world will be blessed. Uh, in Genesis 15, you repeated the same. In Genesis 17, you said my seed will be like uh, the stars of heaven. Now that we are old, 25 years later, you are now saying I will have a child. God said, it doesn't matter whether you believe or not. I've enjoyed this meal. I'm pronouncing my blessing on you. 
I am saying to you, all the promises will become a decree. Nine months from now, Sarah will have a son. I stand on this holy altar and I decree to all those who are barren, who are partaking of this holy communion, whether they are here physically or they are watching at various viewing centers, nine months from now you will come rejoicing. Now, man prepared meal for God. He enjoyed the meal. He was pleased. He made a decree. And the decree came to pass. Can you then imagine a meal? Prepared by God, not by man. And I'm telling you, God is a good cook. <laughs> In Psalm 23, verse 5, Psalm 23, verse 5, David said, Thou preparest before me a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God is a good cook. He knows how to, how to prepare a table. And the meal that he has prepared, the lamb that he used for the meat, you know, Abraham got a calf. God got a lamb. It's his own beloved son. John chapter 1 verse 29. The bread that he said we're going to eat, according to John chapter 6, from verse 48 to 51, John 6, 48 to 51, is the bread from heaven, the bread of life. The wine you're going to drink, according to Luke 22, from verse 19 to 20, Luke 22, from verse 19 to 20, is the very blood of the Lamb, of the Lord Himself. He has gone to a great extent to prepare a wonderful meal. You can then imagine what will be His pain if you treat that meal casually. I mean, in Matthew chapter 22, from verse 1 to 14, Matthew 22, from verse 1 to 14, he told us a story about a king who prepared a mighty meal at the wedding of his son. And then he invited people to come and eat, have prepared. And the people said, hey, we're not interested. He was so pained that he dealt with those people very harshly. You know, the Bible says, when you come to the Holy Communion, don't come unworthily, because if you handle it carelessly, it can kill. But if you come to that table with joy, with excitement, with faith, believing that this meal provided by God himself is the meal that is going to open my womb, is the meal that is going to turn around my destiny. Oh, then God will be pleased. Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, without faith it is impossible to please God. 
What does that mean? With faith, it is possible to please God. Tonight is not asking you to prepare a meal for him. He has prepared the meal. But he's asking you to come and eat that meal with faith. He's expecting you to come and demonstrate your faith in him. That you will eat this meal, this particular meal. And very soon, you begin to give birth to glorious children. God is always moved by faith. I was telling my children at one of the morning devotions last week, talking about the power of faith, how God can be pleased by faith. So I reminded them of somebody who wrote me a letter. I said, Daddy, I'm not asking you to pray for me. I'm not asking you to invite me for prayers. All I want you to do is read this letter. I know if you read this letter, I will get my miracle. So I read the letter and I said to God, let it be to her according to her faith. Two weeks later, I got another letter. Ah, thank you, Daddy. I know you read my letter because I got my miracle. Her faith connected to God. Her faith pleased God and led to her miracle. I want you to come to the table tonight with faith that by the time we have the next convention you'll be coming forward with your children. The meal is ready prepared by God. He will be pleased if you don't treat his meal casually. It, he will be pleased if you take the meal with faith. And we're not just talking about physical wounds now. We're not talking about women who are barren now. We're also talking about people who have been considered fruitless in every facet of their lives come to and God will open your womb and you'll be fruitful in every area of life the Holy Communion is an extremely special meal powerful highly anointed the only meal that God himself could have prepared. And that's why the Bible says, don't take it on what they lay. Don't take it if you are not a child of God. Don't take it if you are living in sin. Don't take it if you have a brother or sister who offended you that you have not forgiven. Because if we do so, as the text that was read to us, you can become weak, you can even die. But you eat it worthily, you eat it with faith, it will open your womb. So if there's anyone here who's not yet a child of God, that you want to surrender your life to Jesus, you want to say bye-bye to a life of sin, Please come now. We will give you two minutes. 
we will settle your case first before we go forward to this important meal. So I'm going to count from one to five. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, come now. The Almighty God is waiting. He's ready to save your soul. He's ready to forgive your sins. Come. There's power mighty in his blood to wash away your sins and to make you a child of God. I'm counting now. One. Two. As for those of you who are listening in your various viewing centers, go to the nearest altar to you and we'll pray the same prayer for the salvation of your soul. And if you are at home, you are giving your life to Jesus Christ, then stand on your feet. Let him see you take action to show him that you really mean business. You want to say bye-bye to a life of sin and you are asking for salvation today. Three. Four. Okay, those of you who have come and those of you who are on the way, cry to Jesus Christ now. Ask him to please save your soul. Ask him to have mercy on you. Tell him to please wipe away your sins with his blood. And promise him that you will serve him from now. And the rest of us, shall we just go ahead and pray for these people and intercede for them? That the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Pray for them, brethren. Pray that the Savior of mankind will save their souls. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. My Father and my God, Savior of mankind, I thank you for your word. And I thank you for these people that have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Father, please receive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Receive them into the family of God. Please, Lord, write their names in the book of life. And the grace for them to serve you wholeheartedly from now. Father, please give unto them. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, that tonight, even as they partake of this Holy Communion, their wombs will be opened. And they will begin to rejoice in you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And now those of you who are in front, let me hear you shout a big hallelujah. Good. I want to promise you from now on, by God's grace, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. If you turn to your left, you will see a man lifting up a placard with counseling written on it. Please follow him. He will take you to where some counselors are waiting. He will collect the information I want, and then they bring you back very quickly. God bless you. You can begin to go. And if we are clapping, let us clap. Let us really clap.
This is the beginning of our year. Whatever you do, do it with all your heart. Okay? Tonight, as we come with faith, as we partake of the bread, let us cry to God and say, Father, open my womb, my womb of destiny. Open my womb so that I can become fruitful. Fruitful in every facet of life. Fruitful physically. Fruitful mentally. Fruitful materially. Fruitful in my ministry. Fruitful spiritually. As I partake of the bread tonight, please open my womb. And when it is time to drink the wine, I will tell you how to pray. As soon as I give you the bread and I give the go ahead, you can eat the bread and continue to pray. And pray with all your heart. The Lord Jesus, the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go ahead, eat, and pray that God will open your wounds now. Hey! 
have been served bread will you please shout hallelujah if you have not been served wine and please let me see the old auditorium oh if you have not yet been served keep it at old auditorium keep it if you have not been served bread in the old auditorium, wave your hand. Oh, okay. If you have not been served wine in the old auditorium, wave your hand again. Okay, so there are some people who have not been served bread and wine in the old auditorium. Please, pastors, help us. Thank you. Well, we we'll take one more for us there. The blood of Jesus sets me free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus sets me free. The blood of Jesus.
call on the almighty God to send down fire a fire that will consume every doubt every unbelief you see Sarah laughed that the almighty God overruled her doubt we're going to pray that God will send down his fire that every doubt, every unbelief, everything that can stand between me and fruitfulness, the fire of God will consume. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had sought, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me in the name of the Father yeah. and of the Son yeah. and of the Holy Spirit Thank you, Father. Send down your fire. Send down the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let it consume every doubt, every unbelief, everything that can be an obstruction to my fruitfulness. Father, send down your fire. Send down your consuming fire. Let it consume my doubt, consume my unbelief. Consume every obstruction, Lord God Almighty, to my tremendous fruitfulness. Send down your fire, Lord. Send down the Holy Ghost fire. Reka mundra moko shinke ren moko chunke kankari moko shande Ire keke tundra moko ko shingara manka shata Ike nundra moko nundra maka shike keke runde ke moko shante Kendra maku kure moko shike nundra maka tante Send down your fire Lord Send down your fire. Let you consume every obstacle. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. That may want to stand between me and tremendous fruitfulness. Father, send down your fire. Let the fire consume. Send out the fire. Thank 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father and my God, I want to bless your name again. Thank you for the tremendous opportunity you've given to us to dine with you. Thank you for the body that was broken for us. Thank you for the blood that was shed for us. Tonight, Lord God Almighty, as we had partaken of your body and your blood, please open our wombs. And every obstruction through our fruitfulness, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and otherwise, send down your fire. and consume them all. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Right, let someone shout hallelujah. Right, let's be seated for a few seconds and uh, remain an attitude of worship. Pass your cups to the aisles so that the officers can help us collect very quickly. And then let's take our offering, an offering of gratitude. Gratitude for a body that was broken by stripes. Gratitude for the blood that was shed for us. And as soon as we are ready, with joy in our heart, in sure assurance that God has been pleased with us because we have demonstrated our faith in him, we dance to the nearest basket and drop our offering, and then we'll have the closing prayer. Over to you, friend. Big, big God, mighty God, Jesus Christ is a mighty God. Big, big God, mighty God, Jesus Christ is a mighty God. Big, big God, oh. big, big God.
so father we thank you we thank you because we know we shall testify accept our thanks in jesus name father please receive the offering of your children sanctify it use it for your glory and right now in every facet of their finances let them be fruitful in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen now if you know you are going to be fruitful from now on i want to hear a fruitful hallelujah <laughs> 